Spotfire's Web Mashup API makes it easy to embed analyses into web pages. With some simple HTML and JavaScript, you're able to place interactive visualizations into any container on your site. In fact, it works seamlessly with common web technologies like jQuery and Bootstrap. In this video, we'll walk through the steps necessary to embed a visualization onto your site. As a prerequisite, you'll need to create and save an analysis on a Spotfire server. The environment that I'll use for this demo is Spotfire Cloud, which you can try for free at spotfire.tibco.com. I've created a demo account called Matt Murdock and saved the analysis called Mashup on my public directory. Now that I've got an analysis that's publicly available, I can get the key bits of information that I need to embed this analysis on a web page. You'll need the URL for the server, the path to the analysis that you saved, and the name of the page inside the analysis that you'd like to see rendered inside the web page. Now that we have a server, the path, and the page of our analysis, we can embed it into the site. So the first thing that I'll do is include the JavaScript API. This is all of the libraries that Spotfire provides that are necessary for this capability to be embedded on your page, and also includes the methods that allow you to interact with the analysis once it's on your page. You may want to note that the base URL of this resource may change depending on which Spotfire server you're using. Then, in the JavaScript itself, there are a few startup variables that are required. The server URL is the base URL of the Spotfire server that we noted before. Below that, we have the path to the analysis, which if you remember, was users slash Matt Murdock slash public in the demo instance, and we're including the file name to the analysis, which is simply mashup. When the web page that we're creating is called, the content from this resource will be loaded and injected into whatever container I choose. There are some additional placeholder variables as well. There's one called parameters, which is for passing something called a configuration block. This allows you to set the initial state of the analysis in terms of filter settings, data loads, and other things that you can tell Spotfire to do. Next, we have the customization object, which allows you to control certain user interface options like showing a toolbar, showing a status bar, or even making an analysis available for download. And of course, we have to create an instance of the app itself, so we'll see how that's used in the code below. And then we have the final variable called reload analysis instance. This can be used for testing purposes. If you set this to true, the cached version of the analysis on the server will refresh every time you reload the HTML. Now that we've set our variables, we can trigger the methods that load the Spotfire content. But to do this, we'll need to point to a specific container on our page. Here, we have a few lines of JavaScript that serve to create the Spotfire application object. Below that, you can see that we're using that customization object. They're pretty self-documenting, but we'll see a full explanation of those options both in our documentation and on our community site. And of course the final step is of course to point the Spotfire object to a container in your page. In this case, we're pointing to a div called DemoViz. We're specifying what page to display when the Spotfire content first loads, and we're passing any customizations that we've defined up top. And finally, we have the body of our HTML, which is obviously very simple in this case. You'll notice that my div has an ID of demoviz, just like the variable that we established in the JavaScript above. I have a container specified as a div, but you can use a span or a table cell or really any kind of container. Now that I'm done, I can upload my file to a web server. In this case, I'm using Amazon S3 as my server, but you can use whatever you want. So you can see that I've uploaded my file, called it from a web browser, and you can see that my visualization is coming up embedded into the page. In this case, there are certain aspects of the visualization that I'd like to hide, so I'll go back to my configuration block in my code and change those options. I'm also going to take this opportunity to style my code with CSS. With a few tweaks to my customization block, I've got a clean scatter plot without any status bars or navigation showing. Now the true power of our API comes when you want to embed multiple visualizations that interact with each other. For instance, I have another page of my analysis called Product Management. These charts use the same data set and marking as the scatter plot from the first page. Along with some extra CSS, adding the second page of my visualization is as simple as creating another variable, giving the correct page as an argument, and placing it in a new container. When we load the website up, we're showing all of our charts on one page. 
And if your charts are made to work together like the ones in our example, then the interactivity is maintained across the different containers. You can start embedding interactive visualizations into your own website today by going to spotfire.tibco.com. The various assets from this video are available on the TIBCO community site where you can ask questions about this or any other Spotfire related topic. Let us know what you thought about this video in the comments and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.